People living in Rock County, it's their turn now to pile up the sandbags as thousands of people are preparing for more water. We'll take a look at the water levels coming up. And a judge says there's probable cause to take the sexual assault charges against a Badger football player to trial. This is News 3 This Morning. Good morning and welcome to News 3 This Morning. It's Wednesday, September 12th, and it's a gorgeous day, gorgeous week to get outside. None of us are enjoying it because we're all so sick. We're trying to catch up on sleep. Yeah. But we have a beautiful sunrise this morning. I'm a huge fan of sunrises, mainly because I don't like working in the dark. But there you look go. Look at this. Uh, lots of color on the horizon this morning. Sun comes up just after 6.30, so a little later every day. Skies are clear, though, this morning. We are actually up a few degrees here in Madison. 59 now, 59 as well in Janesville, 55 in the Dells, and 58 in Platteville. A comfortable start to the day will be a couple degrees warmer than we were yesterday. Yesterday's high was 78. Today we should top right around 80 with partly sunny skies. Now let's take a look at your first alert traffic maps this morning. We'll see if there are any slowdowns to report. Not a whole lot happening traffic wise just yet, which is always good. No accidents either around the area, so you are traveling at posted speeds as you head into Madison. And that's your first alert traffic. So nice to see a few less little yeah. icons for flooding. Yeah, not as it. many road closures. Yeah, yeah, really yeah nice. slower than water recedes. All right, thanks, Eddie. You're welcome. We start this morning out east as interstates in North Carolina and Virginia, they're expected to back up, look a lot different than roads here as about 1.7 million people are under a mandatory evacuation order. Hurricane Florence is expected to make landfall Friday and when it does, it could sit there and dump upwards of 45 inches of rain in some areas. The analytics firm CoreLogic estimates the Category 4 storm could cause more than $170 billion in damages. Losses from Katrina totaled around one point, or excuse me, $161 billion worth of damage. So within the last few minutes, the president is tweeting that FEMA, law enforcement, the first responders along the coast, they are all ready for what could be the most costly system to ever hit the United States. About 30 Red Cross volunteers from here in Wisconsin are also headed east to help out. Weeks after flooding in our area and after it first started here across southern Wisconsin, some parts of the viewing area are just starting to see those water levels crest. That's the case over in Rock County, where the Rock River near Lake Koshkanong reached major flood stages just yesterday. So far, there haven't been any reports of structural damage because of those levels. More than 20,000 sandbags are in place along the river there this morning still. The good news, though, is the rock could return to normal levels as early as next week. In Dane County, a group meets today to talk about ways to help workers and businesses affected by the flooding. The Commission on Economic and Workforce Development will hear about services available to people who might be unemployed as a result of the weather and how the Department of Labor could help repair public infrastructure. The federal government would have to issue a formal uh, disaster declaration for the county for that money to come through. That meeting starts at 4 p.m. at the city county building. We are seeing a record number of beach closures following the historic flooding. All beaches along area lakes are closed until further notice. Health experts are worried about bacteria and blue-green algae blooms. The Clean Lakes Alliance is trying to cut down on runoff to reduce the number of pollutants in the water right now. Workers are asking people to let your own water at your house flow into your grass instead of into street drains and to use a rain barrel to help prevent extra water from even reaching the ground. The Alliance says those measures can help reduce runoff without damaging your own property. First alert traffic wise this morning, drivers in Rock County should be aware of some paving that's starting in Beloit this morning. This is happening on Chopier Road between Prairie Avenue and Cranston Road. Beloit police say crews are trying to get as much work done as possible before the morning commute. All right, 604 your time now. Each year on average, as many as 20% of people here in the U.S. get the flu. Tens of thousands are hospitalized and thousands more die from flu-related illnesses. The CDC says it all costs upwards of $10 billion in medical expenses, and that's why they are once again recommending everyone get a flu shot and maybe do that now. Christina Laurie talked to doctors at UW Health and has more on what's new with this year's vaccine. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Danica and Leah. Every year, the flu vaccine is readjusted for the new season in hopes of targeting the strains that will likely circulate that year. Scientists study which strains are prominent in the southern hemisphere and develop a vaccine that will attack them should they spread here. Oftentimes they do, but not always. The CDC says it can't predict whether this season's vaccine will be 
a particularly good match for the viruses circulating, but experts say some protection is better than none. Now, new this year, the nasal spray flu vaccine has been reformulated and is now once again recommended by the CDC. The American Academy of Pediatrics has said there's not enough information yet about it, but it could be used in non-pregnant women and people between the ages of 2 and 49. They had originally come out with a statement saying something like it should be the vaccine of, la of last resort, and I think they've backed away from that a little bit and basically said that it's certainly a viable alternative, but we have a lot more data on the injectable vaccine just because we've been using it consistently now for decades. People who pass on getting flu shots may have second thoughts about skipping them again this year. About one in five people who didn't get the vaccine last season reported that they're more likely to get the flu shot this time around because last year was so severe, according to a Harris poll released back in July. Now, flu activity tends to pick up in October and November, usually peaks between December and February. Dr. Conway says right now he expects this year to be a moderate flu season. Last year's was particularly bad, but of course, there's no way to know for sure. The only thing certain about the flu is that it's unpredictable. <laughs> yeah, I remember last year. Half the newsroom was out. I was one of them. Really it was bad. bad. I think I got it twice. Oh, I don't know if that's possible. All right, well, Christina Laurie reminding us to get the flu shot this morning. Thanks, Christina. 606 right now in Wisconsin wide receiver Quintez Cephas will go to trial on the two sexual assault charges he faces. A judge denied his attorney's motion to dismiss one of the felonies yesterday. The defense plans to argue that the two women Cephas is accused of assaulting were not drunk at the time and that the acts were consensual. A criminal complaint claims both of the women were intoxicated the night in question. The prosecution still maintains there was no consent. Cephas denies any wrongdoing but is still suspended from the Badger football team until the legal proceedings are resolved. He could face up to 50 years in prison if he is convicted on both of the charges he faces. Coach Mike McCarthy is going to update reporters later this morning on whether Aaron Rodgers will be able to suit up against the Vikings on Sunday. Earlier this week, McCarthy said the team was still learning more about the knee injuries Roger got on Sunday night before leading the Packers to that pretty incredible comeback against the Bears. Roger said in a national radio interview yesterday he's taking it one day at a time. Now NFL rules require the Packers to announce whether Rodgers or any other injured players are able to participate in practice by 3 this afternoon. The team's official injury report for Sunday's game comes out on Friday. Lots of Packer fans paying attention to that. You better morning. believe it. <laughs> All right, 6.07 the time right now. A number of paths have been sitting underwater over the last couple of weeks, so it's been hard to get out and ride your bike. But later today, there's going to be some new mobile repair stations to make sure everything's working as it should before you take your two wheels out for a spin. We're going to share the details next. And it would be a beautiful day for a bike ride if you have a route with outstanding water. You'll probably need the shades, though, too. Hattie has the sunshine continuing through the week in your first alert forecast when News 3 This Morning returns.
Good morning from the Hattio patio. Lots of birds in the patio this morning and bunnies all enjoying the quiet weather that we have. Looks like it's going to continue for the next couple of days at least. Now, here's a look though at the Atlantic. All eyes weather-wise are on Hurricane Florence. It is still a Category 4 storm with winds at 130 miles an hour. It is going to continue on its west-northwest track through the day today. Expected to make landfall sometime later on Friday. But it's really uh, sandwiched in between several larger pressure systems. Two areas of high pressure to the north and then one area of low pressure to the south and west. All steering that storm toward the Carolinas. Again, 130 miles an hour wind speeds. That is the most current forecast. Those tropical storm force winds, though, extend 175 miles out from the center of the storm. That means the entire storm is about 350 miles wide. That is longer than the state of Wisconsin. So this storm is bigger than our state. It will continue to track pretty quickly through the day today, and it's expected to increase in uh, uh, intensity as well. As we go through the day, it's going to be over very warm waters. As it makes landfall sometime on Friday, then it's expected to move very slowly onshore. That high pressure area that's been giving us the nice weather is going to prevent that storm system from moving too far inland. That will mean very heavy rain. And here is the forecast for rain just through Sunday. And again, that's not the uh, total for this storm, but they'll likely be adding up rain in feet along the coastline, creating a very uh, dangerous situation with flooding conditions. Now, right now, all is relatively quiet uh, in the uh, mid-Atlantic states. Not a whole lot of rain showing up on the map. There are some showers and thunderstorms in the southern part of the Mississippi River Valley, but through much of the country, the forecast starts dry today. The Edgewater Sky Cam showing you no issues with fog here in Madison. A little bit of patchy fog through the River Valley, but that's about it this morning. Temperatures are starting in the 50s. It's a comfortable start to the day. We'll see a nice warm up though through the morning. Mostly sunny skies this morning with temperatures already in the low to mid 70s by lunchtime. It'll be just a little bit warmer than it was yesterday with highs right around 80 degrees. Plenty of sun expected in the forecast. Again, just like it has the last couple of days, once that sun sets uh, about 715, temperatures will drop pretty quickly through the evening hours. We'll find ourselves in the 50s again tomorrow morning. Our extended forecast keeps that quiet weather through the weekend right into the first part of next week. Next rain chance comes on Tuesday. Now let's get a look at traffic this morning with Josh Tim. Good morning, Josh. Yeah, it's a quiet start on the roadways, including on the Beltline this morning. No delays showing up yet heading east or westbound. Checking out routes here in Dane County. Just a few of the usual brake lights popping up on the northbound side of Verona Road and Stoughton Road near the Beltline ramps. No problems at all downtown around the Capitol Square and UW campus. Look for things to get busier at least over the next couple hours. Now, the main routes heading into the city are moving along at the usual speeds with no crashes or delays. Let's just hope it all stays that way. With your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. All right, thanks, Josh. Thanks, Hattie. 614 your time now, two months after a deadly explosion displaced folks in downtown Sun Prairie. The city is doling out half a million dollars in aid collected from surrounding communities. The Disaster Relief Committee says $220,000 of that money is going to go toward homeowners and employees who might have lost their homes or their jobs in that explosion. Another $150,000 will go toward businesses affected in the downtown area, and $140,000 will help first responders in town. If you live or own a business in Sun Prairie and you haven't heard from the city yet, officials say they will reach out to everyone directly to let them know if they're eligible for help and how much money they might receive. A program to help people recovering from opioid addiction is expanding to a few more hospitals in our area. ED2 Recovery connects emergency room patients across the state with an overdose survivor to help mentor them through the recovery process. Staff are also assigned to check in on those individuals to make sure they continue treatment. Those services are now available in 22 ERs across the state, including at Beaver Dam Community Hospital, Fort Memorial Hospital in Fort Atkinson, and Mercy Health in Janesville. 15% of kids and 41% of adults in Wisconsin are considered obese, but there's work being done behind the scenes to change that. The Madison Rotary is going to get an update later today on those efforts from one of the leading researchers on the topic. Dr. Vincent Crines from the UW School of Medicine and Public Health is giving that talk. Earlier this year, Dr. Crines helped create a study that shows how obesity rates can fluctuate from community to community and even from neighborhood to neighborhood here in Wisconsin. 
He'll talk today about his obesity prevention initiative to make sure neighborhoods are healthier across the state. Later today, a group representing cyclists in our area will unveil four new bike repair stations and bicycle racks around the city. Just Bikes will also recognize the graduates of its mobile bike repair internship program. The organization used an $84,000 grant to fix and give away 1,100 bikes earlier this year, install other maintenance stations around the city, and provide safety and repair training for riders. Today's event takes place at 530 at Centro Hispano on Badger Road. Okay, a Wisconsin man is getting some well-deserved rest this morning and maybe having us <laughs> all reconsider our own workouts after completing seven Ironman distance triathlons in seven consecutive days across seven Wisconsin locations. This is the craziest story of the morning. Triathlete Chad Esker has already competed in a dozen Ironman competitions in his lifetime, but this is a new milestone. Each day, Esker swam more than two miles, biked for 112, and ran over 27, making for a total of nearly 1,000 miles in just a week. Esker's mission is to inspire others to get out and challenge themselves to live a happier, healthier life. Ironman Wisconsin here in Madison marked Esker's seventh and final race of the week. And as if we weren't impressed enough, he did it alongside special needs athlete Autumn Moan as part of the My Team Triumph organization. Wow. I feel so lazy right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, he's like, oh, encourage your, you to challenge yourself. I, I don't know if I, if an Iron Man is even needed to challenge myself. <laughs> so let alone seven in seven days. Yeah, forget it. Forget what? it. Good on him. He's not human. It's, right. He is a superhuman for sure. Yeah. Congrats to him because boy, oh boy. I don't know if I even have like any desire to go there. That is a lot of training. That is a lot of training. That is impressive. But yeah, not, not Danica and I's calling. Yeah. Keep, keep it up, man. <laughs> keep it keep going. It up. We'll us. be the cheerleaders on the sidelines. <laughs> All right, 618 right now. We know it can be trendy to buy local, but it's pretty easy when there are things like a remote control Packers cooler <laughs> made right here in Wisconsin. And yes, you can fill that with spotted cow and an apple pie liqueur made in Cambridge. Those are just some of the items up for the title of coolest things made in the state. Maybe we should put Hattie up for that contest. She is pretty cool. She She's is. also from Wisconsin. Just about everybody loves her for that <laughs> fabulous forecast she keeps bringing us. She's going to have an update after the break on News 3 this morning.
Good morning, I'm meteorologist Hattie McLean. We're starting with sunshine this morning. Clear skies here on the west side of town. You can see from the WIC TV sky cam. Oh, this is the Platteville cam. Uh, clear skies in Platteville as well. So no issues with clouds this morning. Another beautiful day is expected. Temperatures are starting pretty similar to where they were yesterday. Just a few degrees difference. Here are the current numbers. 59 in Madison and Janesville. 53 in Watertown this morning. Basketball checks in with 52. Your bus stop weather forecast calls for a fast warm up once again. Low 70s by lunchtime, upper 70s as that bus takes you home from school. Have a wonderful day. All right, thanks, Hattie. And if you're like Hattie's family and you've spent all summer trying to count up all 85 Buckies on parade, today's your last day to finish the hunt. Starting tomorrow, the statues are going to be removed from their sites to be cleaned up and repaired if need be. 55 of them are already sold and are going to go back to their sponsors. But if you're in the market for an eight foot tall Bucky to join your family, Danica is, I think, another 30 are going to be auctioned off. There's a live auction scheduled for September 29th and a separate online auction that includes other items as well. All proceeds will go to a number of nonprofits, including basketball coach Greg Gard's charity, Guarding Against Cancer. Like I said last hour, that <laughs> is quite the lawn ornament right there. All right, 623 right now. One of the state's leading chambers of commerce wants you to vote for the coolest thing made in Wisconsin. Among the products on the list from our area, and yes, we did some research, a bottle of red wine made in Barneveld, a specialized AED that's produced in Deerfield, targets from Janesville made to look like dinosaurs, and gift boxes filled with products from the Badger State sold out of Mount Horeb. Epic, Clawbrune, Craft, and something called a Whirly Board in Lake Mills. They are all on the ballot this year. 5,000 votes have already been cast in Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce's contest. If you'd like to vote, visit madeinwis.com. First round of voting ends Sunday night. All right, snowbirds and spring breakers rejoice. There's a new nonstop way to escape Wisconsin winters this year. American Airlines says it'll start flying a nonstop flight from Dane County Regional Airport to Arizona this winter. The flights take off January 6th. This is the second airline to announce an Arizona destination. Frontier did so just last month. Tickets are now on sale for both of those airlines. There's a call for ideas and opinions on what one of Madison's suburbs should look like in 20 years or so. Middleton officials have put out an alternative, alternative futures survey covering topics like housing, transportation, and the environment. This is part of the community input process for the entire Madison area as populations around here are expected to grow by another 150,000 people by the year 2040. You can learn more about the project tonight at 5 o'clock at the new plaza in downtown Middleton or check out that survey online. Middleton will collect survey answers over the next two months. All right, 624 your time now. We're not sure what it is. It might be the allergies, the temperature changes, maybe just plain illness, but yeah. all three of us at the desk here are not feeling our best this week. Maybe we should have gotten our flu shot a little earlier than when doctors are recommending. We will have more on that. And with the pending closure of two state-run youth prisons, there's an interesting discussion happening about what's next for juvenile offenders here in Dane County. Today's top stories are coming up on News 3 this morning.
city leaders are going to be looking through the capital budget today. We'll get a look at some of the big ticket items. And after a brutal season last year, the CDC says we need to be thinking about the flu now, not when it hits. This is News 3 This Morning. My voice is like five registers lower. <laughs> Leah's know. coughing. Good morning and welcome to the final half hour of News 3 This Morning, 628 on this Wednesday, September 12th. We have been scrubbing down wherever we can in our path to try to keep the germs away from everybody else. Try not to touch other people. I've got hand sanitizer yeah. on my desk. Hattie too. Certainly doesn't feel like flu season, no, though. No, no. Gorgeous day in store today, Hattie. No, it doesn't. Doesn't help that the newsroom is like a Petri dish. <laughs> <laughs> All sorts of things brewing in there. But we have beautiful forecasts for today. I have my jacket on. It's a little cool outside this morning, but a nice warm-up is expected. Take a look at the Henry Vila Zoo Sky Cam. This is Barrett, the polar bear. Now, most pools have closed for the season, but Barrett's lucky her pool stays open. A great day to uh, swim today for the polar bear. Temperatures are in the 50s this morning, 59 here in Madison, 55 in Mineral Point, 56 in the Dells. Winds are light from the south. They'll continue from the south all day today. So our day planner temperatures actually are just a little bit warmer than yesterday. Yesterday's official high here in Madison was 78. Today it'll be 80. Skies will turn partly sunny for the afternoon. Now here's a look at your first alert traffic maps. So far this morning, we've had good news on those uh, traffic maps, and that continues at this hour. Just a few brake lights on the Beltline at Stoughton Road, but it looks like you're still traveling at posted speeds as you head into Madison from the surrounding communities. Cool. And that's your first alert traffic. All right, Hattie, thank you so much. House Speaker Paul Ryan will likely talk about the effects of tariffs on Wisconsin businesses and another phase of tax cuts being considered by Congress during a Q&A later today. On Monday, House Republicans introduced three different bills that had to do with cutting taxes again. Those would make it so individual and small business taxes tax cuts, that is, were permanent. The Trump administration had received some pushback for making the cut for the corporate tax rate permanent and only temporary tax cuts for uh, individuals and those small businesses. Now, the new bills are all about increasing hardworking Americans' take-home pay. That's what Ryan told CBS News. Ryan is not running for re-election, so his term will be up officially early next year. He will be answering questions, though, from the head of WIS Politics later this evening. That happens at 445 at the U.S. Capitol. If he is re-elected this November, Governor Walker plans to launch a new program to convince more Wisconsin students to live and work in the state after graduation. In a new ad that started airing yesterday, the governor says he would also continue a tuition freeze across the UW system for four more years. His new initiative would give college graduates who join Wisconsin's workforce $5,000 over five years. Challenger Tony Evers hasn't commented on that new ad yet, but he has been critical of the governor's work with education in the past. You can ask questions about Dane County's juvenile justice system later on today, ahead of the two state-run youth prisons closing a few years from now. The interfaith group called Madison Organizing in Strength, Equality, and Solidarity, or MOSES, will host a panel on the topic tonight. They're inviting Dane County's juvenile court administrator and superintendent to speak, along with the county's youth justice manager. That conversation goes from 6.30 to 8 at the Damascus Road Church on South Park Street. Madison's Finance Committee meets later today to talk about the city's $1.1 billion proposed capital budget for next year. A lot of that investment would go toward upgrading and expanding public transit. The mayor's proposal would add $47 million to Madison Metro's budget over the next six years or so. That would go towards safety improvements, storage garages, and new transfer points, among other things. Mayor Paul Soglin is prepared for some pushback from council. The capital budget was drafted before flooding issues, but alders don't expect any major changes. Representatives from different health and human services programs across Dane County will make their case for more funding later today. That's when the Human Services Department will pitch its proposed budget to the board. People who work with the homeless community, seniors, people with disabilities, kids in the welfare program, and others will all defend their budget proposals for next year. That meeting starts at 6 tonight on the second floor of the city county building. And then tomorrow, there's a public input session about budgeting for all the other departments in the county. County Board Chair Sharon Corrigan says that meeting will give people who live here a say in spending priorities. All right, it is almost 6.33 right now, and Leah and I are not sure if the nastiness <laughs> we're trying to flush out of our systems with tea and DayQuil is flu-related, but experts are saying we should be thinking about a flu shot now 
and not when it actually feels like flu season. Fingers crossed it's not. That usually picks up in October and November and peaks during the winter months. Christina Laurie asked UW doctors what we should be prepared for this year. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Leah and Danica. Doctors at UW Health agree with the CDC. There is no way to tell if the new season's flu shot will be a good match for the viruses circulating this year, but they say that even if a particular batch of the shot offers less than ideal protection, some protection is better than none. Now, flu activity tends to pick up in October and November, but since it takes about two weeks for the effects of the vaccine to set in, getting vaccinated now offers you the best protection. This year's shot has been adjusted for the upcoming flu season. Researchers study which strains circulate in the southern hemisphere where it's already winter. And despite some misleading articles out there, if you get the flu shot early in the season, your protection will not run out before flu season ends. The articles that suggest that there are breakthrough cases late in the season usually are related to the fact that the flu virus has changed throughout the season and new ones emerge. And so when people get disease later in the season, it's usually not that the vaccine is failing, it's usually that the viruses are changing. Nasal spray flu vaccines have also been reformulated and are now once again recommended for this year's flu season. However, the nasal spray is only recommended for non-pregnant women and for people between the ages of 2 and 49. Now, getting the flu isn't only inconvenient, it's pricey too. The CDC estimates the illnesses cost an estimated $10.5 billion a year in direct medical expenses and an additional $16 billion in lost earnings since anywhere from 5 to 20% of Americans will get the flu. Now, Danica and Leah, since you guys are both sniffling, <laughs> sneezing over there, I hope you get the flu shot as soon as you're feeling better. I think that is the plan, and certainly with last season's, I mean, it was just so brutal last year that I think everybody's at least thinking about it this time around. Absolutely. All right, Christina Laurie reporting live for us. Thank you, Christina. 6.35 your time now. The Milton School District is trying for its third referendum in the last two years, but this time it's asking the community what upgrades they'd like to see. The district is holding a planning event tonight, starting with a tour of the high school and a workshop to brainstorm ideas. That starts at a quarter to six. The Janesville Gazette reports that referendum could cost anywhere from 40 to $80 million, but the board is stressing it has to be cost effective. The school board has until January 22nd to approve a resolution to get the referendum on April's ballot. 635 right now and Janesville School Board wants the entire state to recognize Indigenous Peoples Day and not Columbus Day. We'll have an update in the morning sprint. And a group of veterans are honoring man's best friends who died fighting for our freedom. We'll bring you to the cemetery where you can pay respects to service dogs. That's when News 3 This Morning returns.
Welcome back. It is 639 on this Wednesday morning. We always ask you to share your morning with us, and Brenda captured this beautiful shot coming at you. This was emailed to oh. us. A rainbow. I'm not exactly sure where that is. We're not going to see any rain for the foreseeable future. But what a gorgeous picture right there. Brenda, thank you so much for sharing. What does your morning look like? Take a picture, post it on our Facebook page, maybe on Twitter, and use the hashtag MyNews3 this morning. MyNews3 morning, rather. Danica and I like to share our favorites right here on the program. All right, 639 your time now. We have the first totals in for our Coats for Kids campaign, and things are off to a great start. We're up to 213 coats so far. You can help kids in Dane County by donating your gently used winter coats, hats, mittens, or snow pants. Just drop them off at any Clinky Cleaners or Lucier Family YMCA across Dane County. There is a memorial in Michigan honoring dogs who have sacrificed their lives to save others. A group of veterans took an abandoned pet cemetery and turned it into a war dog memorial for military dogs and those who have served next to first responders. It took them two years to actually turn it into a final resting place to properly honor those canines. Yesterday, on September 11th, they buried the 20th dog in that cemetery. Everything is free for the dog's owner thanks to donations, and one of the main organizers says the cemetery, quote, made his heart burst. What a great tribute for canines. It's a really interesting idea, it isn't is. it? It is, yeah. yeah. All right, 6.40 your time now. Keep it coming. That's our message for Hattie again this morning. More dry, sunny, pleasant weather heading our way. And she's pushing back the rain chances yet again. Her first alert forecast is next. First, though, it's September 12th. We want to say happy birthday to Owen, Cheyenne, and all the kiddos turning three out there today. We welcome any kind of leftover cake, just for the record. <laughs> Thanks for letting us help, help you celebrate right here on News 3 this morning.
Welcome back. You are taking a live look outside right now at the Chicago skyline this morning. The sun just starting to rise in that city. Going to be a pretty gorgeous day there. Lots of sun in the forecast for them. But if you have a trip planned to visit this week, you might want to double check your reservations. They could be impacted by a hotel worker strike still on this morning. 26 hotels in that city are out of commission as thousands of housekeepers, servers, cooks and doormen walked out on Friday. The hotel workers union is demanding year round health insurance, sick days for doctor's appointments and higher wages. Regulators in Minnesota are postponing a meeting on an oil pipeline replacement after protesters disrupted the Public Utilities Board there yesterday. That commission had approved the project back in June to replace the pipeline that runs from Alberta, Canada, across North Dakota and Minnesota to the Enbridge Energy Terminal here in Wisconsin. Native American and environmental activists argue the line risk spills in fragile areas. Enbridge says the work is meant to protect people living in the area and that protesters have crossed the line. All right, quarter to seven now on this Wednesday morning. Let's turn it over to Hattie with, again, the best news of the morning, Hats. <laughs> yeah, we just continue with this beautiful weather pattern and it looks like it will hold through the weekend. So for Green County Cheese Days in Monroe this weekend, really, I don't think you could have asked for a better forecast. It is going to be warm, but relatively low humidity. So still comfortable. Highs in the low 80s each day. You can see lots of sunshine, no rain in the forecast there. Take a live look from the WIC TV sky cam. Sun is up this morning. Skies are clear. It's going to be a beautiful day once again today. Satellite and radar zoomed into southern Wisconsin, not showing anything across the area. There are a few high level clouds across northern Wisconsin, central Minnesota, a long cold front that will just graze the northern part of the state. No rain though for us here in the southern part of the state. Airport delays this morning, none reported at any of the major airports in the region, so smooth uh, flying, but there are some delays in Dallas this morning, so be aware of that. Also, travel is going to become increasingly difficult in the mid-Atlantic states. Your travel forecast does call for rain from Dallas and San Antonio all the way to Washington, D.C. today and even up to New York for the Great Lakes region and continuing out to the west. Very quiet conditions expected with lots of sunshine. Now let's take a look at the Atlantic, though. All eyes are on Hurricane Florence. It is a Category 4 storm right now in between the Bermuda High and an area of low pressure that has developed in the Gulf. Those two pressure systems will act to steer that storm towards the west, northwest, and towards the Carolinas. High pressure in our part of the country is really going to prevent that storm and slow it down as it makes landfall. So it's going to prevent it from moving too far inland. For us, though, this area of high pressure means pretty quiet conditions continuing for the next several days. Lots of sunshine in the forecast. All the rain is going to stay around us, especially to the north. Our forecast is looking pretty nice. Here's a look at the details. Temperature wise this morning in Minneapolis with a bit of cloud cover at 70 degrees early today, 61 in Des Moines, 62 in Chicago. We generally have 50s here across the southern part of the state. Our dew point trend is a little bit upward today, but not too much, hovering right around 60, so still feeling pretty comfortable. 80 degrees is a pretty popular number to the south for highs today. 80 in New Glarus, as well as Evansville, 81 in Milton today. To the west, we're pretty close to 80 as well, 79 in Fenimore, 81 in Muscaday, and to the north, 80 from Mauston, all the way over towards Princeton. Madison will top at 80 degrees as well. Gorgeous day. It'll be warm, but low humidity is expected with a light south wind. Temperatures hover right around 80 through the upcoming weekend. And we've pushed those rain chances back until Tuesday with a cold front moving through the area. Here's our pet walk. <laughs> Hank and Juke relaxing on the couch. Uh-huh, sure. Know. You always have that one friend. You just want to take a nap, <laughs> and they continue to bother you. We're going to follow Hank and Juke's little idea I know, I'm here. I'm not sure which is curl which. Up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the dog's form of texting, like, <laughs> yeah. while trying to nap, like, yeah. hello, like in the you, there? <laughs> you there? All right, thanks, Hattie. You're welcome. Morning Sprint's <laughs> coming up next right here on News 3 this morning. You there?
651 time now for the morning sprint. Teddy has more of the same in store for today. Sunny and warm. She will share just how long that's going to last. And Christina Laurie has some advice from the CDC that might be a little too late for Danica Hattie <laughs> and I about getting your flu shot early <clears throat> this year. But we start in Rock County where the Rock River near Lake Koshkonong is finally starting to crest after historic flooding in the past few weeks. It reached major flood stages yesterday. So far there haven't been any reports of structural damage because of those levels. More than 20,000 sandbags are still in place along the river there this morning. The good news though is the Rock could return to normal levels as early as next week. Dane County's Commission on Ec Economic and Workforce Development will talk about services available to people who are unemployed due to the flooding. That group will also discuss later today how the U.S. Department of Labor could help repair public infrastructure here. The federal government would have to for formally uh, issue a disaster declaration in order for that money to be available. We are seeing a record number of beach closures following that historic flooding. All beaches along area lakes are closed until further notice. Health experts are worried about bacteria and blue-green algae blooms due to runoff in the water. The Clean Lakes Alliance is asking people to let water at your house flow into your lawn instead of into the street drains and to use a rain barrel to help prevent extra water from even reaching the ground. The president is tweeting this morning that FEMA, first responders, and law enforcement are all ready for what could be the most costly storm system to ever hit the United States. Hurricane Florence is expected to make landfall sometime Friday. There are about 30 Red Cross volunteers from Wisconsin heading there today. Meteorologists predict it could drop as much as 45 inches of rain in some areas. Analytics firm CoreLogic estimates that Florence could cause more than $170 billion worth of damage. That's $9 billion more than the damage done by Katrina. CBS This Morning will have live reports along the East Coast starting at 7. in control and very quiet conditions. Sunshine is in our forecast for today. Temperatures are starting in the 50s this morning. 59 here in Madison, 53 in Watertown. In the Dells, you're at 56. Temperatures over the next 12 hours will steadily climb. Sunshine through the afternoon with highs right around 80 degrees. A light south wind is expected as well. Thanks, Hattie. Just in this morning, the Pope is summoning all head bishops around the world for a summit on how to prevent sex abuse within the church. This, as the Archbishop of Washington, D.C., says he's planning to meet with the Pope to talk about resigning. Some have alleged Cardinal Donald Worrell knew about abuse allegations against his predecessor, former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick, and did nothing about it. Both cardinals say they're innocent. That worldwide summit is scheduled for February. The prosecution will go on as planned in the case against Wisconsin wide receiver Quintez Cephas. The judge has denied his attorney's motion to drop one of two sexual assault charges that he faces. Cephas is accused of assaulting two women while they were drunk. He denies any wrongdoing and says the acts were consensual. He is suspended from the Badger football team until the legal issues are resolved. He could face up to 50 years in prison if he's convicted on both of the charges he faces. A program to help people recovering from opioid addiction is expanding to a few more hospitals in our area. ED2 Recovery connects emergency room patients across the state with an overdose survivor to help mentor them through the recovery process. Those services are now available in 22 ERs across the state, including Beaver Dam Community Hospital, Fort Memorial in Fort Atkinson, and Mercy Health in Janesville. The flu doesn't really pick up until October and November, but experts say now is the time to get your flu shot. Doctors at UW Health recommend everyone six months or older should get their flu shots as soon as possible, and especially before the end of October. There's really no predicting, though, just how, how severe this year's flu season will be or how effective this year's vaccine is. But doctors stress that some protection is better than none. It takes about two weeks after getting the vaccine for its protective effects to kick in. And new this year, the nasal spray has been re formulated and is once again offered and recommended by the CDC, but they still say the shot is most effective. Thank you very much, Christina. The Janesville School Board is asking the state to add Indigenous Peoples Day to the list of holidays observed by the Wisconsin public school system. The Janesville Gazette is reporting that that group unanimously sent a resolution to the state committee. If it is approved, it would go to a vote at the state school board convention in January. Now, Madison already formally recognizes Indigenous Peoples Day instead of Columbus Day. You can ask questions about Dane County's juvenile justice system later today as two state-run youth prisons are set to close a few years from now. 
the interfaith group known as Moses will hold a panel on the topic tonight. That conversation runs from 6.30 until 8 at the Damascus Road Church on South Park Street. Two months after a deadly explosion displaced people in downtown Sun Prairie, the city is allocating half a million dollars in aid. That city's disaster relief committee says $220,000 of that money will go to homeowners and employees who lost their homes and jobs in the explosion. Another $150,000 will go to businesses affected in that area and $140,000 will go toward first responders. 6.56 your time now. Let's turn it over to Josh Tim with a look at your first alert traffic. Good morning, Josh. Broadway, inbound John Nolan slowing down near the Olin Avenue and North Shore Drive intersections moving into the downtown area. And northbound Rona Road getting busier between Highway PD and the Beltline, but other main routes heading into the city are moving along at the usual speeds with no crashes or delays. If you are first to learn traffic, I'm Josh Tim. All right, thanks, Josh. And the forecast is pretty easy today. We're looking at sunshine in the area. Temperatures starting in the 50s this morning. Skies are clear here in Madison. You can see sun shining on the buildings in downtown Madison. Our forecast today has high temperatures right around 80. Humidity should stay relatively low, so it should feel pretty comfortable. Our nice weather, guys, continues right through the weekend. That's what we'd like to hear. Thank you, Hattie. Thank you all for joining us. And as CBS This Morning follows Florence this morning, we're going to try to follow the Wisconsin volunteers heading out east to help people in that area.